Hey, everybody. Welcome to Pink Shade. It's Monday. It's a mugshot Monday. I'm here with Keisha. We are here to talk Hi. about Love After Lockup. And this is on video. You can head over to YouTube and look up Pink Shade Podcast to see us. And uh, we're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing video. We're trying to do video every Monday. I'm trying, guys. I'm trying. I'm trying to We've been on a pretty good roll. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're keeping up with I, the time. I, I gave zero fucks today. I just threw in a hat. Mary Payne, if, I mean, if you're not watching it, Mary Payne looks like a hottie. Oh, she yeah. She looks like somebody b- broke her back last night in wow. a good way. Wow. And like she went to the spa. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She looks mm-hmm. like she drank all the collagen. <laughs> She's looking really, really good. This is called, I actually did my makeup, which I normally don't do. I normally just slap on some mascara for this and then hope the filter does its magic. But I put on, my, I'm going out to dinner tonight. So I was like, I'll just go ahead and put all the makeup on my face. And, um, and I yeah. thought she did it for me. And now the yes. truth comes out. That's but what tr- I meant to say. Late. That's what the I meant to say. Come out. Mm-hmm. Rewind. Sure. Sure. This was a good uh. episode. This was a good episode. I've got a lot of good episodes. I was writing notes for this week. We had a very good episode of Forbidden Love. That is coming Mm -hmm. to an end. There are only eight episodes. Um, Episode seven will also drop today on Monday. And then there's another new, brand new show, Before the 90 Days. And that's got some real hot messes on there. Really? Oh, my gosh, Keisha. There's a girl from Frisco named Mm -hmm. Tiger Lily. And... um. She talks like this, like, oh my God. So I got married when I was 30. And so anyway, she basically. Did you say she got married when she was three? 30. Oh, I thought you said three. I was like, they start early over there. No, she, it's, she was basically like got married to this guy. He was very controlling and like had cameras all over the house and all this. She got divorced. And so. The next logical thing is when you, she's very, very wealthy now because of this first marriage. Oh, okay. Unclear how I have my, way. I have my friend from Frisco <laughs> looking into it. Um, <laughs> but she's like, so anyway, my boyfriend is Adnan. He's 22 and lives in Jordan. And when we get there, we have to get married because he's Muslim. So we have to get married the first day I'm there. Smart, real smart, real the first smart. Day you're there. Yeah. Mm. Her yeah, therapist is that, that money uh, fast. Yeah. The therapist is like, what about your finances and stuff? Like, you yeah. know, and she goes, I don't know. Like he could have more money than me. And the therapist is like, have you talked to him about it? No. Yeah. Ew. I need to know that first. <laughs> like I need for you, I need to see your bank statement. I, I need to see all of that before I come over and marry you on the first day of us meeting. Yeah. It's not going to go well for Tiger Lily from Frisco. No, oh, no, she's real little pretty little though. Heart. Real pretty. She, well, she's if gorgeous. she talks the way that you're, mm-hmm. how you're saying, she thought she needs to be pretty. She talks like all the Kardashians combined with like the yeah, vocal fry and like the baby talk. I can't yeah. stand it because you know they don't really talk like that. No, because you can hear it when it slips a little bit. Uh huh. Yeah. You know, it's you the same can with hear Paris Hilton. Yes. Like, You'll hear her on a video and say, and then all of a sudden, my name is Bill. Like <laughs> her voice sounded like you hear her real voice. It's like, oh, so that's what you really sound like. My name is Bill. Oh my I God. I caught you, Paris. Oh, by the way, if you guys didn't see the reel that I put up of Keisha and I last week, that shit was so funny when we were recording for Love is Blind UK and a spider. By the way, still haven't found that spider. He is gone. He was like, I don't know who those two women were, <laughs> but I'm warning all of my friends not to go into this office ever again in life. I don't know what was wrong with those 40 plus women over there, but no, no, thank oh, you. Oh my gosh. I, it's on my, it's on my um list downstairs. I've got like, call the sugar house for a brow wax, you know, do this. Like I've got lists of things I got to do on Tuesday when everything goes, but w- number one, call the bug man, call the bug man. We can't have this. Not yeah. Anna messaged me. She said my mom was like editing this, and she would could not stop laughing. I'm like, it's funny. I could not stop laughing every time you jumped back and go, oh my god. (laughs) I laughed every time. Even thinking about it this morning, I started laughing. (laughs) I was so serious because I just, I don't know. I felt like whatever it was was gonna get me too. Like it's gonna get the both of us. 
crying. Oh, and I did a bunch of clips last night that I haven't made into a reel yet, but I'm going to do it here in the next day of mm -hmm. Amy and I recording this weekend on Hey Bunky on the $5 level of Pink Shade Prime covering um, um, 90 Days Happily Ever After doing Angela. Mm -hmm. So I started like, like Angela said this and Amy goes, Ray Payne. Hopefully this is the last time we're ever going to see Angela on our television. This is going to be the last time you ever have to imitate her. You got to do it right. And I was like, all right. So I just put a bunch of shit in my hair and stuffed a bunch of stuff in my bra, you know? And then I found some Angela merch that I have here on my board. Cause you know, I've got everything in this office. I mean, oh, yes. when I tell you watching it back, I was, I was crying laughing at how stupid I am and crying laughing at Amy. Three actions. Um, yeah. Well, her also pretending like she was Sean Robinson. It was, <laughs> You guys, sometimes in this job, you know, I'm just like just grateful let, because it's just, it's just fun sometimes. It's just, it's fun you know, most of the time. Yeah. That's how I fell in love with you. Was you doing the imitations of, uh, the impersonations of Angela. Oh I'm God. like, who is this Southern lady that just breaks out and starts <laughs> sounding like Angela? I was like, I like her. I like when she's on. I'm like, she's funny. That's how listen, I fell in love with Mary Payne. Listen. I know a lot of Angela's in my life and I'm sure you've run across a few yourself. Yes. Yeah. If you yes. live in the South, you know, quite a few. Yeah. Thank everybody. Oh, keep yeah. Michael strong. I'm interviewing Emily and Kobe next week and I'm going to mm -hmm. ask them if they're housing uh, Michael. Are they holding him in their basement? <laughs> the fact that so many people who donated to his GoFundMe, like people are still donating. He's up to like $50,000. Good. Because that's how much people hate Angela. She's so like, I was trying to tell my husband about it. I was just giving him like a brief about it. Cause I was like, again, yeah. watching the thing and laughing over and over. And he was like, are you okay over there? I go, this on? is so funny. And yeah. uh, I was telling him about her and She's awful. And he goes, I don't understand. Like, why did he marry her in the first place? I go, well, I think at first it was, it started out kind of as a scam. And yeah. then he did I like, he like her, her and thought she yeah. was funny. Yeah. And they had Until sex a lot. And abusive. Yeah, yeah and, and then I she see why he liked her, but then she just went totally crazy. I said she got abusive. I told my husband, I go, she's physically and emotionally abusive, and she's racist. Yes. And he goes, yes. but isn't he black? I go, yes, he's black. She's racist towards I, her own husband. Wait, so I need to send you something I saw on Starcasm. They showed a picture of uh, Scotty's dad. Okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's a full, very dark skinned black guy. Yeah, I think, uh, I don't know if that's the dad of both of her kids, but I think that, I think Scotty and Skyla have the same dad and he's, yeah, he's a big black guy. Yeah. I, I, I always knew that. I never knew that, but he was also in prison because there's prison photo, like visit photos. Excuse me. Now I did not know that. Okay. I'll send it to you after the show. We have heard yeah, rumors that that Skyla is going to be on the single life. No, it's oh shit, which one? I can't. Scotty's the one that's Scotty's... been in prison for pedophilia. Okay, I think this is Skyla's dad. Yeah, but it might be the same dad okay. as Scotty's dad. I'm not sure. Well, his genes didn't even try if those are his biological children. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. not not even a little bit. They just said we get no. All Angela, you can have them. You can have them. Or maybe yeah. she had. I don't know. Maybe she had those two kids with somebody else and then married that guy. I don't know. That's what people are trying to figure out. Yeah. I'll send it to you. Yeah. Cause there's prison, you know, the, the prison background. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. The one we love so much. And there's yeah. Skyla and Angela and this guy. Interesting. Huh. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get let's into talk talking about our about own it. show. Let's talk about our own prisoners. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. I don't need to waste one more breath on that, Angela. That oh my god, piece of crap. All right. Um, so Love After Lockup, season five D or season five, episode five or episode thirty six. Take your pick. Pick your pick. It might be actually episode thirty eight. Unclear. Unclear. Could be thirty six. Okay. Could be five. Could just anyway. I didn't even write down the title. Like I mean, I'm just like whatever. Um, I don't even you, remember what the title was. I don't even have it. I'm so sorry, guys. Normally I write it down, but I've been writing so many notes and having such a great time laughing at my reels this weekend. I just didn't even. Um, okay. Anyway, we start with um, Zariah. I'm going to say Zariah because that's how Troy okay. says it. Like Mariah, okay, but Zariah. Because I feel bad just calling her Z because there's like what you wrote me well, this weekend. Z5. Z5. 
I was so glad you immediately got it. I wrote back, not Z5. Come on now. I said, there's <laughs> so many Z children out there. So she's Z5. <laughs> I'm surprised she didn't name her kid. Um, Me too. Azalea or something. I don't know. But yeah, she didn't. Yeah. yeah. I, she's I, like, I'm done with that. Too much. Sorry. Too much. We're going we're gonna to start all over with the alphabet. We're going to Z to A. <laughs> 100%. I bet that has something to do with it. A to Z Maybe. and something about the Bible. Yep. I bet it does. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. All right. So we start with Grandma Karen. She's continuing yeah. to have a weed induced breakdown. And yeah. Troy says, My mom seems to be having some sort of spiritual attack. And at the same time, mm -hmm. a gummy weed attack. Like, I don't know if she's yeah. laughing or crying. I've never seen her quite like this. I mean, this is a woman that grew, he grew up with his mother being a raging alcoholic. Yeah. And uh, he's never seen her like this. <laughs> She's having okay. a range of emotions. But that's what happens when you've taken one too many gummies. Never had a gummy. Matt Mars always like, oh, when we God. blah, blah, blah. You have to have a gummy. I go, I can't do it. I'm too scared of it. I can't. You'd have to start off slow. I can't. Why? The, but what's the point of it? Like, I don't want to. I'm scared. I don't want to do that. Mm -mm. Oh, I'm scared of it. <laughs> that's what Matt says. Um. <laughs> Uh, so dad is continuing his sermon and, uh, mm -hmm. as dad is continuing the sermon, Karen is just like, ah, woo, woo. she is laughing. She is slapping. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then she goes, I'd like to see him every Sunday. Um, now when dad is preaching, Marge Simpson's in the back and mm -hmm. she is taking photos of the crowd. Mm -hmm. For some mm -hmm. reason, I don't know if like, because if she takes pictures behind him, there's that camera pointing at him and okay. she's like, I'm going to put this on our social media to look like we're bigger than we are. Like a camera's like a camera crew's watching us. I can see her doing that. Yeah. Cause reasons. we, we, cause we peep their uh, Facebook page. It's not a very large congregation. It's not, it is in a basement, but they do have, I mean, they do have that huge sign is yeah they did so and it appears they have matching mercedes suvs yeah so there's lots of questions maybe they have really good regular um, jobs no i think this is their job and i think they have a big online thing because he has a lot of stuff online oh and a lot of people do online church services now yeah yeah that um, way okay. if you took one too many gummies you could just click off when you're done when it gets too loud for you yeah yeah so, um, all the, also I saw on, um, the, the thing, the Facebook group that he's pastor, mm -hmm. doctor, Henry, yes. whatever. So he's pastor, doctor. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, now if I, I would just go with doctor, if he's earned a Me doctorate too. in philosophy or something, I'd just go with doctor. Yeah. But I mean, that's how Dr. Martin Luther King did it. He did put pastor, what's Martin Luther King? Reverend. He was like oh. Reverend Dr. Reverend Martin Luther Dr. Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. I guess, you know what, if I had the titles, I would use all the titles. Maybe I would too, if I just had any title. Because I would want title. everyone to know. Yeah, me too. Like I went to school yeah. for this and I need accolades. Yeah. Um, okay. So he is start, uh, he's screaming about the prodigal son being home and all this mm -hmm. stuff, right? Meaning Troy. And right. then mom says, as he's saying this, oh, my titties are hanging out. Okay. I, this is dragging. I got to go. Got to go. Got to go. She ha she just walks out, just walks out. And okay, it's so real I'll obvious because there's only seven people there. <laughs> I will say this: when she kept talking about how it's dragging on, they hold you hostage. Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I, I grew up in a Catholic church, mm -hmm. and the few times that I've been to a Baptist church, they keep you all there all goddamn day long. Yeah, like it really does. It keeps going and going and going and going. You're like, I got shit in the crock pot. I gotta go. You know, so. <laughs> Well, you know, the, the, the thing in Mississippi, not just Mississippi, but probably most Southern churches is like you, the bat, the Methodists always get out like five minutes early. Cause you got to beat the Baptist to, to lunch, wherever you're going, right. Uh -huh. Wherever yeah. you're going, if you, if the Methodists will let you out at 1155, then you're good. You're going to beat those yeah. Baptists because they're going to get out five <laughs> minutes late. It's always, always about, it's yeah. always about beat the Baptist. Um, yeah. okay. So they go out, she goes out in the parking lot and, uh, She's bitching about the noise and the racket. And then Troy comes mm -hmm. out and she goes, listen, I'm high. You took me to church like this. I, I took like three gummies. I want to get this goddamn dress off. He goes, well, that was your choice. to take It the was. Gummy. So then sweet Isael comes out and Troy's like, listen, that's just your crazy ass grandma. 
And she's like, oh, my God, I love him. She's so sweet, but I'm sorry, yeah. baby. I'm going to try not to corrupt you. <laughs> <laughs> so Aziel go back, goes back in, and Troy starts to go back in. And she looks at the camera and goes, follow him. Stop following me. Oh. And they're like, well, this is where the action it. is. She's where the action and, is. Yeah, like you're the star of this episode. And For you sure. would have started the episode last week as well. So, Ooh, yeah, we need more Karen in the camera. She's a mess. She's a mess. And so in his talking head, Troy goes, you know, I think my mom being at church really brought up a lot of feelings from her past, from her drinking and drugging days and running the street. And I hope one day she actually can verbalize what it is that, this, you know, mm -hmm. made her feel and everything. So back inside, Zariah tells Aziel, I go outside and get her. And he, um, he, Aziel goes back out again and goes, um, my mom told me to come out here and tell you to come inside. <laughs> Yeah, because you're supposed to uh, meet my grandparents. And she goes, no, mm -mm, not now. Just tell them not now, baby. I got to go. I tell them I'm sickly. Just make up stuff. Um, She's I, telling the high woman is telling the preacher's grandson to go inside the church and tell a lie. And lie. And lie. Yeah. And mm -hmm. she was like, that's that's terrible. Anyway, go do it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and she's muttering. She goes, they got to come on. I'm hungry. I'm high. And this is why I don't go want to go to church. They hold you hostage. Now, I'm going to apologize to those parents. I might can meet them later. Maybe after they smoke their weed or whatever. I was like, oh, God. Oh, God. This is when I saw the matching Mercedes SUVs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's going to corrupt. She's trying to corrupt anybody that she can. It's it's TV gold. Um, so they all go out to the parking lot to meet her. Now, this is when I noticed. So I sent you the screenshot of, he had like a pair of Air Jordans, like under his chair. Yes. Troy did. Mm -hmm. And when mm -hmm. he comes out to the parking lot, he's carrying those Air Jordans and a garment bag. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if like the parents got him a gift of like a nice suit and some new shoes or something. Yeah. They probably have Psalm 45 on the bottom of it. And mm. that's like his preacher suit because they are dead set on him becoming a preacher, which is not crazy because he's never shown any interest in that none so they all walk out to the car and they're like now how are, nice to meet you how are you doing how are you doing she goes not great i don't like to fucking be exposed <laughs> you shouldn't expose people like that like he had a whole sermon and i was feeling that and i liked it but he exposed me and they were like okay okay so mm -hmm. it's super nice to meet you and listen right. we're going to tell you something we just love here seeing you. And one thing we know, you are yourself and we love you. Yeah. A hundred percent. She's all hers. You have to wonder what they are really thinking in their minds. Cause you know, on the way back inside that church, they were talking hella shit about that woman. They were like, first she gets pregnant by one inmate and then marries his cellmate and then brings that guy home with his crazy mother. Who's high up in our mm -hmm. church. Very. She, so, you know, she originally told us that she took two gummies. But then the truth really came out. She took she three. She took three. She takes four that's in a she, day. So she took yeah, three. Almost the a whole daily dose. Yes, yeah, that's <laughs> where she fucked up at. And she, there's nothing she could do. She's got to ride that wave. There's nothing. Everything she kept saying, like, I've been there before. <laughs> like, you just got to ride the wave. It's nothing you could do. It's going to be hours. Go lay down. It's going to be hours. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. So um, as mom and dad are talking to Troy and, um, Zariah, Zariah, oh God, Zariah and Isaiah outside the car. That. Yeah, the mom is muttering in the car. It's just hot. It's freaking hot in the car. It's hot in the car. And Zariah's like, "Well, we can open the door. I don't want the door open. You're exposing me." <laughs> so, they also could have just started up the car. I, they're just like get, they kept like opening and closing the door like to fan her yeah. in and out. Like like she was like a baby. They were that was asleep in the car that they were trying not right. to move. <laughs> <laughs> they'll wake her up <laughs> and the talking head mom goes uh karen says she feels exposed and you know i feel that and if that's what she believes then that's what she believes and i'm just gonna keep her in my heart <laughs> bless don't her. bring her back here anymore like mm -mm. we're good on karen mm -mm. we've seen enough uh and then you know, they're leaving and she's like, we got to get ready. We're going to Buffalo tomorrow or whatever. Mm -hmm. And and Troy says, you know, my wife's parents think that I'm going to be a minister one day, but I have yeah. other plans for myself. Like I got to get out here and acclimate to the world. He said, I'm not going to be a pastor or a minister. No, you're not. Yeah, no, no, and, and they're wrong for trying to pressure him into doing that. It's weird. It's not like he ex has expressed like all my life. I wanted to, to be a that. minister. Yeah. I went on the wrong path and now this yeah. is my chance. No, I mean, I can see you getting up 
one day and at church and giving your testimony. Yeah. Right. Well, you don't about have to become how, a preacher you, to do that. No, how you changed your life and everything. Well, how um, you started your life with you started dating your cellmate's wife. Oh, uh, well, let's go and back how to the went on from there. Yeah, I mean, we could go back to, you know, his mom, obviously. Um, yeah. 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 So you, okay, well, we've already discussed it. Sorry, I am, I'm putting um, strengthener on my nails. Um, this well, is very, I mean, don't let me, I'm, don't don't let my manicure get in the way of a good podcast. Well, I, I'm sitting over here doctoring a runny nose, which we just, I just discovered right before the show. Yes. How my nose is always running because the dog, the Chewini is always on this particular couch. Yeah, and I'm never on this couch unless I'm recording because yeah. my nose does not run like this like during the day. Like, but that's what it is. Now you figured it out. You got to get a little. Root, 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 root. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. right, let's go to Kim and Joey. Now, lots of people said when he came back in the house, he seemed high. I saw that on uh, some of the Reddit and stuff. Did you think that? Yes, he was oh. high the whole goddamn time. I uh, see. I didn't. I didn't pick up on that he was acting different, but I did notice his man hips snap since you had pointed him out. I was like, oh, he does have man you hips. You just now notice yeah, those childbearing hips. <laughs> but the, did you think he seemed high? Lots of people were like, oh, maybe he's his on like eyes, a methadone program or something. Well, maybe he is, but he was most definitely on something. Yeah, I think he said he was on some sort of like methadone type of program that okay. it's a drug that you take if you're a opioid addict to not. I think it's still also right. really, bad, really bad for you. And you don't want to be on that either. Yeah. He, if something was going on. Um, so he walks in and she goes, well, you've been gone a while. Where'd you go? She's annoyed with him and he's trying to kiss her and everything. She reminds us she has an air tag in his car, so he's not getting yeah. away with shit. And she showed us where she put it in the car too. I was like, oh, he'll never figure that out. It was like tight oh. down in a side pocket. Yeah. And I think like in one of his bags, there's an air tag. Oh, I think she like put it under the panel on the bottom. Yeah. 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 She's smart. She ain't sneaking off anywhere. Yeah. She's very mm -hmm. smart. So for a person who's dating a prisoner. Right. Right. Yeah. So it's an hour later and Poppy, her, her dad and Miss Tammy, his mm -hmm. mom are coming over. So Tammy comes in, she's in her Christmas, you know, fine sweatshirt and everything. And she comes in with Joey's niece, Savannah. Now, yeah. Joey must have a brother or sister or somewhere that's like, I'm not filming, but if Savannah wants to go, she's over 18. I can't stop her. Right. Well, Savannah wanted to get that, you know, hundred bucks so she could fix that missing nail that she had. Oh, I can see that was one of her nails gone. Oh, God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, she got to get over to Tatum's toes. It's They're all in the family. I know. She gets a family discount now. Gosh. So Savannah takes him outside because the producers told her to because this was very staged. Right. And was like, I just wanted to tell you, you know, now that you're out, I got to tell you how much you hurt me. In sixth grade, I found a needle of yours in the bathroom. And that was life changing for me because I didn't know what any of that was or what that meant. And so, I mean, I got to say, I 100% believe this story and think if you're in sixth grade and you find your your druggy uncle's heroin needles, that's got to be pretty life changing because they have to somebody yeah. has to explain to you what it is like. That's awful. When she first said life change, I was like, oh my gosh, she stuck the needle on her own. But she Keisha. didn't do that. Thank God. Well, I did. Because I was like, oh, life, life changing. I was like, oh shit, she stuck. But no, I got it. That was very traumatic to find that. It was just Me like, as a kid, well, I probably would have poked myself with it. I was just, just like, kid. Yeah, like the loss of her innocence. You know, she had to be like, yeah. what's this? And probably her, you know. Right. Um, she says, in 2018, I gave you $40 that you said was for a train wow. ticket and you used it for drugs. And I didn't have that $40. And I gave okay. it to you and then you used it for drugs. And he's like, you know, I'm changed. I'm not like that anymore. I'm really sorry. And she goes, well, you're just going to have to show me like your words don't mean anything. And he says, I know yeah. my words don't mean anything. And I'm going to show that you can trust me. Um, and he hugs her and goes, I'm going to do good. It's okay. I'm going to do good. He had uh, the emotional capacity of a potato during this scene. I think he's very numbed out with whatever he's taking. He very numbed out. Like that yeah. hug he gave her. Did he start like, good doggy, <laughs> good doggy, patting her on the head. I'm like, please stop patting her on the head. She's well, he still thinks you. she's like, she's probably in his mind, she's like 12, you know, but she's like obviously 20 Well, something. she's not. She's a full grown woman. Yeah. And, and you're just, oh, no. of everything in that whole scene, it was the pet patting on the head that just got me. I'm like, stop. 
Uh, I just can't, I can't get over his hair. I just can't get over his hair and his lack and of it, connection yeah. between the, this. I just, all right. So now we're reminded, um, dad wants to talk. Ed wants to poppy wants to talk to him about the stolen dirt bike from 20 years ago. He's not going to get over it. Mm -mm. He's just not going to get over it. Um, so poppy has walked in and when he walks in, Tammy, um, uh, the dad, Tammy, oh God, sorry. What? God, well, I just forgot his name. Joey's mom, Tammy. Poppy. Gosh. Oh yeah. Tammy. Yeah. Uh -huh. Joey's mom, Tammy walks in and she goes, well, hey, Ed. hey. She oh, lit God. up when she saw Poppy. She got all excited about Ed. He sure did. Hot and bothered. Um, and then they're about to open presents because they now the grandparents have brought presents. And he goes, Hey, I got I want you to go over there and look under the tree. I got a <laughs> gift for you. And she goes to open it and he goes, and he gets down on a knee and goes, proposes, and he goes, I want you to take that crappy ring off. And here's a real ring. And she's like, Oh my gosh. It was um, a nice size ring. It was, yeah. Now, listen, for what yeah. he paid, I think he could have gotten a bigger one. I'm going to be honest. I just feel like if that's all the money that I had, mm -mm. I don't think I would have spent it on a ring. I wouldn't either. So no he says, um, I would be like, here's to the household expenses. Since I'm going to be living off you until I, I can think get a she'd job. appreciate that a lot more. Yeah. So um, he tells us that he wanted her to have a nice ring and the ring was thirty seven hundred dollars. Mm -mm. He did a lot of gambling in prison and saved his money. Has nothing to do with drugs. He sacrificed sometimes getting his extra ramen noodles just to <laughs> save up this money. So Kim says to Tammy, did you know about this? And she goes, I played the fifth. <laughs> um, now, <laughs> Ed uh, Ed takes Joey outside and says, uh, okay, great. You just proposed without ever talking to me, but all right. right. And he says, Moving forward, what I need to see from you, I need to see you working. I need to see you taking care of these kids. And I need you to leave that other life behind. And right. he goes, oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm changed. I'm going to do all that. And he says, now, my son, now this is interesting, right? Because now we're mm -hmm. hearing about it's Kim's brother that got this story. Uh -huh. He says, my son was convinced that you and his cousin. So that would be his nephew. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't claim him. So he just says, my son and his cousin. <laughs> <laughs> he says that's like my, me saying james's sister instead of my sister-in-law right somebody in yeah. your family yeah you just don't um, blame them yeah my son was convinced that you and his cousin stole that dirt bike you know and i'm having a real problem getting over that even though you were 14 and you've literally been in jail six times since then but um like he has paid for like let's say he had gone to jail for stealing what was that? An ATV, a dirt bike, four yeah. wheel or whatever it was. Yeah. He's done his time plus, plus, plus. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. So let's, let's, let's just let it go. Poppy. He just wants him to admit it. And um, he's never going to do that. And Joey says, Hey, listen, I did buy stolen things, but I never like went into nobody's house and stole nothing. See, but it was stolen out of a garage. So there's where he, Mm -hmm. He's using he didn't technically go inside the house. No, he went mm -hmm. in the garage. So dad uh, tears up as he always does when talking about his daughter. <laughs> and he says, I just want my daughter to be happy. And I hope you yeah. can do that. And the talking head dad says, uh, I hate to say it, but I think he's lying about that motorbike, about that dirt bike. <laughs> he's ne never going to get over it. He's literally going to be on his last breath. Just admit it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just admit it. Um. <laughs> He says, I think he's lying about that dirt bike, but I gave him a blessing because she's as happy as I've seen her in six or seven years, but I got my eye on Joey and I, yeah, I still think he's going to be doing drugs within three months. Well, it's what? true. We all kind of think that too. And the fact that you say your daughter hasn't been as happy as six or seven years, yet she birthed two children. I guess that wasn't enough to make her really happy. I think because she had those bad relationships with those, with that other guy or whatever. I mean, mm -mm -mm. wow. Yeah. So um, now let's go to Bianca and Daniel. Now I didn't get to talk about oh them gosh. before because you talked about them with Kimberly and then we didn't yes. have them last week. Uh -huh. But I, I really cannot believe when you and Kimberly were talking about the friend Andres, you did yes. not say George Michael because that was George Michael wham hair, <laughs> exact George Michael wham hair. 
That's what it looked like. I got so, so many DMs. They're like, oh my gosh, when you said John Cougar Millen Camp. They're like, I passed that away. Like, they're like, I, I that's all I saw. That is all I saw. Like, he has a good head of hair. Well, he I does. What was going on with that? I don't even know what kind of style or it was just Fit. fluff. He just got a blow dryer, just fluffed it. <laughs> he just really did yeah. that. He yes, really did. but it did look like George Michael from George Wham. Michael with Wham. Yeah. Now that mm -hmm. you said it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It looked like him completely. Actually. I was like, George Michael came back to life. <laughs> um, so Bianca bless Bianca's heart. She is not playing with the full deck. She's oh, just, no. she's just no. not, I don't know what, uh -uh. if she was like that before the accident or after, but I have a feeling she was like that before the accident. Okay. So she's 23. She's unemployed. Daniel, 31, aggravated DUI, third degree burglary. He's in prison for four years. And I got to say something. This is a very good looking man. Oh, yes. He's like by far one of the better looking prisoners yeah. that we've had throughout all the seasons. Yeah. And I even from his picture, I was like, oh, he's pretty cute. But then when we saw him this week, I was like, yeah, now he's yeah. got a potty he's mouth on him, on. but he's cute. Um, And he's dealing with a dummy. I mean, a dummy, with, a dummy with money. That's the worst. She's going to blow through that. Like, first of all, why would you tell the person in prison, prison how much money you have in savings? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So she's on the phone with Daniel, uh, just the phone phone, not the video. And her roommate right. Haley is there, too. And she's telling him, you know, um, I spoke to your parents on the phone and your dad asked me if I was mentally unstable. <laughs> <laughs> and she... Uh, and he goes, oh, wow, I'll, I'll talk to him about that. Like, that's weird. That was pretty weird. She was like, yeah, it's pretty rude. I was like, I think I, the dad was totally trying to make a joke. Joking. I think he was. I, he was. No one would just say that. He, he was joking. But at the same damn time, that was a good question. He wanted to know, actually. Yeah. Yeah. He did. Yeah. Um, and so Haley tells him, tells um, Daniel, you know, Bianca's leaving us and we're all very worried about it. We don't know you. Mm -hmm. And he goes, I understand. You just have to like trust that I'm going to take care of her. And in her talking head, Haley goes, yeah, uh, Bianca's my roommate. And no, I don't have high hopes for this. I think Bianca's going to be crushed. She could have anybody. So like, why, 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 why? I'm just scared for her. I'm just scared for her. Now, I don't know if and Bianca Haley, could have, I don't, I don't know if Bianca could have anybody, yeah, but, she, anybody. but she is, she, she could has, have better. She could have, that's great. That's perfect. She Keisha. could have better that's than perfect, someone yeah. in prison. I mean, and Haley's worried about, well, bitch, who's going to pay that other half of the rent while you're going four months in Arizona? Haley's really cute. And that dog was really cute too. So Haley reminds me of two actresses. One of them is Mae Whitman. Mm -hmm. And the other one is uh, I love Mae Whitman. She reminds me of her, and then she also because Mae Whitman and this girl look alike. Her name is Allison, and she played in Drag Me to Hell. I you lost me. Yeah, and I can't remember, but she looks just like like all three of them are sisters. Okay, okay. Um. Well. Um. Okay. So Haley tells uh tells Bianca, you seem like blinded by love and you're very defensive yeah. but you got no doubts like are you thinking all this through and she goes I mean you know what like I mean I'm so sure of it like I sent him marriage papers because you can do that and get married in prison I sent him the marriage papers but he didn't go through with it he was like no like we shouldn't do that and she's like okay well that's the only smart thing you've ever said that he's done like what the fuck is yeah wrong with you he's what is got wrong more with you? than you do you just she's I don't know if she's weak Weird, young, I do something's like, something there's clicking. A lot going on, but nothing yet, nothing at all is going on with her. So, in her talking head, she goes, I don't know, I think Haley's just being dramatic because I'm gonna move, and you know, I get to experience more things than she'll ever get to experience in her life because she's stuck here. Like, I get to go on an adventure, and I think she's just jealous. You're uh, girl, going to Arizona, ha uh, Haley also could leave at any time. It's not yeah. communist Russia. I mean, yeah, I mean, she's it's just Florida. Like she's going to like this beautiful country or like she's going to Greece or something like you're right. going to Arizona. Stop right. it. <laughs> I, the, I'm going to experience more things than she'll ever get to experience in her life. I go, girl, you're going to Arizona. Wow. What are you talking about? Yeah. Uh, that's how you know that this is 
The light it's bulb is just not, it's flickering. The light bulb is flickering. It's yeah. A little dim. Um, mm -hmm. So she says, and you know, no, we're not engaged, but I consider us engaged. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, maybe he does. I don't know. But once he gets out, I'm going to need a ring on my finger. I mean, even if it's like $20, because like, I think we're engaged. Well, if you didn't say, will you marry me? Then you're not engaged, you dummy. Yeah. And I have a feeling she's going to go buy her own ring. Yeah, probably. Probably. Yeah, she's the type. She could use um, one of Kim's. Kim's got two now. So she's right. get, she's getting ready to do this video visit and she's wearing a sweatshirt and she explains like they have to be modest on the you know video mm -hmm. visits or whatever. Um, I was like, okay, well, what about um, Ayana that we saw last season who was doing full booty claps for her man on the video visit? I guess it depends from state to state. Yeah. God. As we're learning. Um, she says that Daniel is her best friend and it's solely okay. built on an emotional connection not physicality and she knows once they get together in person everything's going to be fine mm -hmm. seems like she's been to visit him once it seems like Haley said you've only seen him once yeah mm -hmm. so she Which gets on well they've only been together like four months okay well maybe it's not that odd yeah I, mean, I thought it was a little bit I thought they were together a little bit longer than that I think it's four months, but somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe she said uh, different. Um, so he gets on and he comments that her hair looks pretty. And she's like, yeah, it's darker now. And he goes, yeah, it just looks really long and pretty. And they only get to do this phone call once a week, this video call. Um, and she goes, I feel like lately we're not like communicating very well. And he goes, um, and she says he feels like he's, she feels like he's been a little different. And he goes, you know, babe, mm -hmm. I'm getting out of here in 29 days. And I've been in here since March of 2020. So I'm a little anxious and maybe that's yeah. coming out in ways I'm not realizing, you know, I'm just programmed in here to follow the rules. I'm set in my ways. This is what I'm used to. So getting out, is going to be like a quick change. It's going to be terrifying, terrifying. So I'm like, wow, here's a person actually verbalizing it instead of getting out and just freaking out, you know? Yeah. Yes. We don't Do see they, that very often. I wish <clears> that <throat> they would be like, okay, for everybody that's getting out in the next month, you have to take this class how to live in the yeah. real world. Here are things that they're doing in the real world. You've never seen. There's a little card and that'll open your hotel door. What? You know? Yeah. And also like help you go in the elevator to your hotel room. Like they don't know anything, these things at, at all. Mm -mm. I mean, key fobs, they mm -mm. don't know about Apple pay. None of it. They don't know. Anything. They don't understand about messaging somebody on text, you know, like it's crazy. So um, he says, you know, I feel lucky I've got you. You're my biggest support system. And she goes, yeah. So like, I'm going to want to drink and stuff. And I hope that doesn't trigger you. Oh my gosh. She's an asshole. And he of goes, it's going to trigger him. And he goes, dude, I'm telling you, if you fucking drink every day, like, I don't know how I'm going to handle that. And she goes, what if one night I drank like a whole wine bottle and I get drunk? How are you going to handle it? And he, and he laughs. He goes, a whole wine bottle. Oh, like, because wow. the way she said it was so stupid. Um, yeah. Instead of bottle of wine, a whole wine yeah. bottle. And he goes, a whole <laughs> wine bottle, huh? And he goes, well, that's a lot of wine. So I guess I'd hold your hair back when you're puking. And she goes, oh, my God. Like, I don't want to be like that. Well, and, okay. And then the talking head, she goes, look, I don't have a drinking problem, but I am 23. And I like to go out and have drinks. And every so often, I like to get drunk. So, you know, <laughs> I am worried about the role alcohol is going to play in our relationship. You know, and me drinking for him is like a hard no. And he can be a bit controlling about that and overbearing. You know, you know what the really fucked up part about it is? Besides the fact that his mom said if he drinks, he will start by using. You were in a cold car accident and almost died. Because of a because DUI. You were, because of a DUI, you were too drunk to recognize that the person who was driving you was too drunk to was, drive. That drove up an airport ramp. Yeah. So there's just, a, it, we've heard her talk more about drinking than we've heard her talk about anything else. This is, my note here is, what is wrong with this girl? Yeah. <laughs> she, sought, she sought out a man in prison for aggravated yeah. DUI. To yeah. help her heal from her own trauma. And now mm -hmm. she's annoyed that the person who's in prison yes. for an aggravated DUI doesn't want her to drink. Oh, my God. She, so much. The, the fact that she said, I need to find a prisoner who's in there for a DUI because they can relate to me. No, bitch. You need to go to, like, a group where other people have been victims of, you know, yes. someone drinking and driving. Yes. They will identify with you. Something's just wrong with her. I don't it's, think she passed the fifth grade. I don't, it's something, it's just 
crossing over in the synapses. Yeah. So she says, she's not going to do well in Arizona. She says, well, I wish I was in a normal relationship. I mean, (laughs) I'm sorry. You know what I mean? (laughs) (laughs) They and he gives her a look that. like, what the fuck? And she goes, you know what I mean. I mean, like, I wish I was with somebody I could so it would be fine for me to drink, even though I sought you out because you're an alcoholic. Oh, my God. Crazy. Yes. And in prison, he's going to run from her. He is. He's going to be the normal yes. one here. He's going to be the normal yeah, one. Yeah, he already is. Yeah. And um, and he goes, look, I'm almost done here. You know, he means for our relationship. This is the worst of the worst. And she goes, well, I don't know if this is the worst. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, I think that him being in prison is pretty much the worst it's going to get for your relationship, you dummy. She is so dumb. Unless she, she, like, forces him to drive drunk again. (laughs) Right. Then he could go back to prison. She could be dumb. And then she could look for another uh, inmate. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. And she goes, well, we don't know if this is the worst. I mean, I think when you get out, like, we don't know what to expect. I mean, you're going to be overwhelmed. And he goes. I'm going to hit the ground running. I've got so much opportunity. And she goes, right. yeah, like, I hope you get a good job. Um, and he says, there's a job here coming up in the next couple of days. I'm going to go and check that out. And she goes, he goes, any problems we have, we're going to face them together. And her talking head, she goes, yeah, like, I know we're going to spend our lives together, but I can't spend all my savings on him. Like, I'm already spending so much on this move. And maybe it's a red flag that he's just letting me make this crazy disp- decision and spend all my money. Like, you know, how can he stop you? This girl is I'm, delusional. I'm, I'm furious at her. Um, She's she delusional. Goes, when he gets out, he has a month to get a job. And then I'm going to be like, I've had it. And then I'm still going to live here for four months because I've already paid for it. Okay. Okay. He so can't we, leave the state for 90 days. Mm-hmm. That didn't mean that you had to move to Where Arizona during those 90 days. You, you could go just visit. Until, yeah. And yeah. then she's having her car shipped and all this shit. I'm like, why didn't you drive? She's stupid. So yeah, she really um, is. now we see another scene. So she's saying goodbye to Lila, Haley's dog. Thank God it's mm-hmm. Haley's dog. It's Haley's dog. dog. Yes. Amen. Um, and she's packing up and she's like, I'm just stressed because I have to be at the airport in a couple of hours and I'm not fully packed and I got to drop off my car to ship and I've got a lot to do and not a lot of time. You know, I'm going to miss my friends. I'm going to miss the beach and all my friends that I've made here. And I guess I'll just have to be like long distance friends. You know, I'm really going to miss like the sunny weather because Arizona, you know, that's like the desert. I, I like the humidity. Uh, I have so much trauma in Florida and I don't care if I'm running away from it. Now she I don't tells feel us, like she's been hitting that sun very much. Not, she's I mean, pretty still looking like she doesn't partake in the sun at, at all in Florida. No. Mm-mm. Now she does tell us a side story that she was engaged at 21. Now she's only 23 now. So this wasn't very long mm-hmm. ago. She was engaged when she was 21 and uh, she was pregnant, but then she lost the baby at 15 weeks and mm-hmm. she she cries about it and says, I don't ever like to talk about this, but she says, I know that if I had that baby, I would be stuck in this toxic relationship with a child. And so in the, in a lot of ways, it was like the universe, you know, whatever. And I do one day want to be a mother. I felt like I was always meant to be a mother. And I hope Daniel is everything he portrays himself to be. Cause I want to have kids with him. Great idea. Great. Girl, idea. you need mothering instead of trying to be a mom. I'd like to meet her like, mother and see what happened. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we've heard nothing about her parents. And mm-hmm. usually we do hear something about the parents. Like, my parents don't agree with me. Yes, they, yes, right. Concerned. She's mentioned nothing about her parents. Mm-mm. Guys, remember the good old days when you could just fall asleep in your makeup and still wake up just like beautiful and glowing and... Ugh. Those days are gone, guys. So if you're noticing changes in your skin tone and texture or you're seeing more fine lines and wrinkles, you're not alone. You guys, we're ladies of a certain age. It happens. But there's good news because today's sponsor, One Skin, has developed a skincare line that targets these changes where they start, which is in your cells, like way, way, way day, deep down in there. Things that my non-science brain cannot understand. This is what I like. This is this One Skin um, OS1 face topical supplement. And they also have an eye cream that I love. And something that um, people don't talk a lot about is the great thing about these products is they, um, you can slip them in and out. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it, but you can slip it in and out where you take the little pouch out and stick it in. So it's completely recyclable. You don't get a new plastic thing every time. They just send you the insert. Like here's the um, eye cream and they just send you like, the middle part 
it's great. It, I mean, it's so eco-friendly to me and no one's ever mentioned that to me before. And I've never seen a product like this before. So in addition to once again, being such a great product, they are eco-friendly. What I do at night is I just wash my face like normal, pat it dry. I apply it. And then sometimes if I have another like heavy nighttime product, I'll put it on top of it. And all the time, whenever I have this, I put it on the back of my hands because that's another place that you'll really start to notice your aging. They've got a face, an eye, a body. They've got the shield. They've got the sunscreen. They've got it all. You can use with all your other products. You fit it right into your routine. Their topical supplements are powered by this proprietary peptide, OS one scientifically proven to target the dysfunctional cells that's not nice that'll start to accumulate under your skin um around age 30. well i'm way past that so thank you lord i've found this product these are the cells that'll make your skin dull and dry and start those wrinkles all of one skin's products for the face and the body and including their um, sunscreens as well are backed by their lab and clinical studies and they have more than eight thousand five-star reviews. One of them is from me. So for a limited time, you can try One Skin. It's 15% off, guys. It looks like this. It's oneskin.co and use code PINKSHADE to get 15% off, okay? Go to oneskin.co and use code PINKSHADE to get 15% off. Tell them I sent you when they ask. Thanks. Mm -mm. So since she's so stressed out about her time, she dug, uh, goes to sit on the beach for a while. Um, she's got no time. She's very, she's very stressed about getting her stuff done. So mm -hmm. she goes to sit on the beach and she talks about how mm -hmm. beautiful the ocean is and how she's going to miss Florida. And mm -hmm. then she prays on the beach for a sign from God. Okay. That's okay. Well, okay. All right. Um, let's move on to Julian and Christine. Um, okay. Lots of, <laughs> lots of commentary this week again about her jaw, what's happening. I sent you some pictures of the track marks all over her hands and her arms that mm -hmm. the production zoomed in on. I did not notice it, but her arm was on his hand and the production mm -hmm. like zoomed in on all the track marks all over. Now I posted that in the Facebook group. Somebody said they're old track marks. What do I know from track marks? Perhaps they are. And, and yeah, yeah, I, I think I told you what, what maybe butt bites. Or you bless like your that. heart. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. What she got attacked on one arm. By a mosquito. That's it a lot happens. Of okay. You've sure. never been attacked by one mosquito like fifty-five times. Um, I have, but not to where it leaves tiny little red dots with bruises around them all over <laughs> down my arms. I mean, uh, another issue that we had that you that I noticed and sent to you, and you said you noticed it, and then it went to the Facebook, and lots of people had noticed it. Her pink choker around her neck that yeah. I was like, God, she's got this gnarly scar. And then mm -hmm. the more I looked, I was like, mm -mm. because when you it's go to choker. her Facebook page, page, every look, she's got a choker on. Like the stretchy yeah, plastic I, line. I, yeah. I, I feel like that doesn't need to be her aesthetic. That's her look. It, it uh, She's always got the stretchy 1987 plastic choker from Claire's on. Always. Well, she most definitely doesn't need to wear a pink one. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. because it looks makes it look like someone tried to cut her throat it looks like she has a jagged scar in a circle around her yeah. neck like yeah. she almost was beheaded yeah yeah so let, let's stick with like bold colors not the yeah. color of flesh that's strange just, strange that's it, all right so they're leaving the hotel after their you know fabulous night of love making and she says a sliver of her <sighs> wishes stop Keisha. I know it's, it's disgusting. She I says a sliver understand. of her wishes she could say in West Virginia, but that's only because of her son. And she's going to miss pepperoni rolls because, you know, they don't have pepperoni rolls in Annapolis. Okay. What is a pepperoni Look, roll? Look, that that's is like right a... up there with missing a child. It is, it's equal. I, what, what's a, it's like sometimes I go to pizza restaurants, they have like pizza bites that are like little bites that have the pizza on the inside. Is that what that is? Somebody That's what I me. was thinking that it was. Yeah. Okay. It's like a pizza in a roll. Okay. So yeah, he says, um, no, he, okay. She says, Hey, since we're driving through West Virginia, you want to see the first bank that I robbed? And I was like, weird field trip, but all right. Okay. Um, it's coming from Christine. 
This of is course. insane. They stop at this bank. They pull into the parking lot. She gets out, shows yeah. him how she wrote the note, how she did it, what she said. You don't have to threaten violence. You just have to make a command. She read it on the internet. Make a command. They have to give it to you. You don't say anything about a weapon. And she feels bad because she could tell the woman behind the counter was scared, but she needed that money to get dope. And in prison, you know, people would ask her, oh, what'd you do? You robbed a bank? And she's like, no, bitch, I robbed six. Whoa. I mean, that is some good street cred right there. But I, I tell you this, mm -hmm. if I were in prison for robbing banks, the last thing I want to do when I get out is go by one of the banks that I robbed. My anxiety would be through the roof. But I think because she was so, you know, <laughs> I was about to say hopped up on goofballs. I don't know. She was so <laughs> fucked up <laughs> that she just laughing at my own joke <laughs> that she was so fucked up. She does probably it doesn't even like remember the whole she probably saw it on the TV and was like, wow, look at me. I look pretty cute that day. Well, I, mean, I would think that if she robbed a bank, there's probably somewhere that says, please don't ever come back to this bank again. She should have a restraining order about that bank. That's what um, I'm thinking. Be hard to get a banking account if you'd robbed a bunch of banks too, probably. Ooh, probably not like gonna that. yeah oh. so there's a cop in the parking lot and she gets all paranoid and probably the cop is in the parking lot because there's a camera crew following these people around a bank parking lot okay yeah that would pique one's interest if you're a cop mm -hmm. like what or the bank could have called and been like we don't know what's going on there's like people out yeah. there that one bitch looks like that and, and it that looks robbed real us. familiar yes exactly <laughs> <laughs> i could recognize that pink choker anywhere right um, so they get to Annapolis and she talks about how pretty it is. And uh, Annapolis is beautiful. I, I can't take that away from her. And um, he jokes about how he has a mansion and the servants have their night off. Ha, ha, ha. And then she goes, we'll be pulling in any minute now. And then you'll be pulling out. Oh, yeah. She's so gross with her I, sex I, talk. I think that she just thinks this is the way to keep him. I think I don't. It's very weird. I can see him getting sick of that. Yeah, behavior. like okay, it's not. I okay. I get it. I get yeah, it. I get it. We're gonna have sex. Me. I got it. I'm in love with you and the jaw. You got me. Right. Yeah. So, um, if the jaw like, hasn't made him leave, I think she, <laughs> I think she's in good. Okay. <laughs> um. So it, it, he's like, "Do you want me to carry you over the threshold?" And she goes, "No, but you know what? I haven't been able to hold a key in a while to like open the door." So mm. he holds Chucky Bonkers, and they walk in. Yeah. So they go to his place, which is completely fine. I did notice the big pictures on the wall of his kids that were blurred yeah, out. I, I didn't know he had kids. He said it, but I had completely forgotten about it. Oh, okay. He said it, like, I think on the first episode that he's divorced and had a couple of kids. Um, okay. So he shows her the kids' rooms. Again, there's bleep room and bleep's room. Yeah. Like, and you can't even say their names. No, that ex-wife is like, fuck No. <laughs> keep my kids' names out your mouth on the television. Yes, basically. Um, oh, damn. So the names are bleeped out. And in the talking head, he says, um, Christine can meet my kids. No, but she has to meet my ex-wife first. I've got to meet the ex-wife. What? Do you but right now it's a secret. And I'm stressed out about how everybody's going to react like it's a delicate situation. You do. You were dating her. Way, exactly. And then she was in prison. And then you knew you were going to be dating her when she got back out of prison. You've had all this time. Yes. You've got all her yes. shit stacked up in your bedroom. Did your kids ever go up there and be like, what's all that stuff in the corner? It's very weird. It, it is the same when we hear like one of the ladies are like, oh my gosh, I didn't lose the weight that I wanted to lose while he's in prison. I'm like, you had the time. Like you actually know exactly when they're getting out. You had four or years. Yeah. You, you, you've had plenty of time to get all of this stuff done. You've had plenty of time to tell your family, get, let them get over the shock. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're just going to be re-shocked when they meet her face to face. Like she's I, a lot. I, I don't know what, ha what his ex-wife does or if she, what her profession is, but it's going to be something when she meets Christine, it's going to be. Yeah. She's a lot to take. She's in. a lot. So um, he goes, yeah, so we're going to go up and like um, see the bedroom upstairs. And he goes, so um, you're going to need to be upstairs when the kids are here Monday, Tuesday, and every other weekend. And um, it's not ideal, but you can have free reign of the house when they aren't here. I immediately said to myself, this is flowers in the attic 2024. You got to hide up here. I'll send you your food. 
or that treat her is like she's got fucking COVID. Like, stay up here, you're quarantined. I'll bring you your food. That's this just is really weird. It's it, very weird. And she's right above them. Are they not going to hear her walking around and be like, Dad, there's a burglar in the house? I know. I know. I don't know what he was thinking. I mean, and this is not just like every other weekend. This is twice during the week. Right. So I wonder if they come over like Sunday night, spend the night at dad's, go to school Monday morning, go to school Monday. Go to school. So they're really only there like at night in the morning before and after school. It still doesn't matter. Thank God, she, because that gives her free reign of the house while they're at school. It, this is it's weird. crazy. It's crazy. So um, anyway, she purrs at him and it's like, this is where the magic happens. Let's get her in the bed. And she always pulls that poor man down on her. Like she always is manhandling him. I think that this is, she's like, this is, this is my thing. This is how I'm keeping this guy. I'm going to show like how sexual I am. He's, he's going to love me and I'm just going to do it. And um, Look, he's and only this, been with two other women. I think you're, you're, you're good. good. You're good. You're good. Also, yeah. this is where we see the marks on her arm um, where the production zoomed in on it or I wouldn't have seen it. So <laughs> he is trying to talk to her about, um, you know, when you're going to think about getting a job and whatever, and not on Mondays and Tuesdays, because you can't leave the house, but other than Mondays and Tuesdays, <laughs> can you get a job? You can get a job. <laughs> and um, she goes, oh, um, getting a job is not my priority. You're being such a buzzkill. Like I'm trying to seduce you. Huh? Um, being broke is a buzzkill. Yeah. That's what and, he's thinking. And the talking head, he goes, look, she does need to work. She has restitution mm -hmm. to pay. She needs help with the bills. Like now that she's out, she's going to need to work. support. And child support. Yeah. Yeah. And in the talking head, she goes, I don't appreciate him bringing this up. I mean, I know I need a job. You think I don't know? Like, it's stressful. Like, ah. Okay. I mean, so they're both right. Yeah. She literally has been out of prison for two days. You yeah, know what right. I mean? And I'm sure, like these guys always do, they make these women think, you don't have anything to worry about when you get out of right. prison. I'm going to take care of you. And then yeah, totally. three days later, they're like, you need to get a job. But yeah. on the uh, flip side, I mean, if she's got restitution and child support to pay, she does need to get a job because he yeah. shouldn't have to pay that shit. No. And get any job, you know? Yeah. Um, He's been taking care of Chucky Bonkers and the brother and the of the Chucky Bonkers. Yeah. yeah. There's two cats. Who, the, 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 Roscoe's like, I don't want to be. Yeah. He's like, I don't want to be filmed. He ran right underneath that bed. He was, he was like, like home. <laughs> what Roscoe was like, what happened to your jaw? It wasn't like that. You guys, <laughs> you guys, we know that whenever we find out what's wrong with her jaw, we're going to feel bad. But I, 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 yes, we will. Lots of, we lots, of, lots of people did say it's tardic dyskinesia. It's TD. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and, a lot, and it is from taking anti-psychotic anti medication. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say it's just from years of meth use, but I'm like, I've, we've come across a lot of people that have had years yes, of meth use. Um, I guess it's just whatever is in your DNA. I don't know. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I'm upset. Okay. Let's yes, go. It, it's not the first time we've had to feel bad about something and apologize. And we're woman enough to do that. And we'll but continue now, to continue to be sorry for things we've said in the future. Um, <laughs> right. Okay, so let's go to Shantae and True. Girl, so, this is just a fucking when, mess. So when Amy sent me last week, no, yeah, last week, she sent me before mm -hmm. the episode, she sent me, do you want to hear a spoiler about Love After mm -hmm. Lockup? And I wrote, no. Okay, yeah, what is it? Yeah. She says, Shantae is pregnant with twins. I was like, you're lying. There is no way so, that is true. So here's the scoop that I've heard. Okay. Okay. All right. She's pregnant with the twins, but then she has a miscarriage. Oh, that's terrible. And she loses those twins. So the rumor is now that she's pregnant again. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so we'll find out if that is all true. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we, oh, I, I was looking, I was looking at her Facebook and she gets, she's, she's mm -hmm. real aggro on that Facebook. About she does people. what? She gets real aggro about people judging her and they don't even know. And yeah. Well, then don't, don't invite us into your stupid life. Cause a lot of shit is real stupid going on with you. Yeah. So we open with her crying in her car from where we ended last week. And she's saying, I ruined my whole career. Everybody was right. Mm -hmm. And 
and um now he's talking on the phone to his mean sister and he's like yeah. um, he's like pull up pull up pull up yeah he goes i'm gonna go, I'm gonna go over there and see shantae i'm gonna talk to her um and he walks up and is like hey what's up what are you mad about <laughs> and she says dude do not get in this car right and so of he, course he gets in the car and this is how people get shot or stabbed i told he, you not to get in here didn't i oh god and he goes look like I, no hard feelings like we can be friends and she goes no she goes what do you want from me oh my god she's bawling crying and so she gets out of the car still crying so he gets out and she's like thank god mm -hmm. got him out of the car oh fuck i she can go off. now so then that's it that's all we get now mm -hmm. we go to this next scene is shantae it's been 14 weeks since they broke up she has a new job She's moved into a cheaper home and so she, she got it out of the other house. Well, we didn't say that part, but she says, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's no way around it. Of course she misses true, but she's, she's really moved on now. After they broke up, she was very depressed. She kept to herself for about two weeks. She stayed in the bed, but then she snapped out of it. And now she's got this new job and is better. And he was sending her messages saying that he missed her. And we see the messages, mm -hmm. but they have not talked. She has not talked to him, which I think is all very like you go girl, be strong. Feeling yeah. good about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She said to a baby store to meet up with her um, best friend, Naya. Now it says Janaya, but she calls her Naya and her daughter, Monet. Monet is mm -hmm. 19 and Monet is 30 weeks pregnant. Okay. So that's seven months. Yes. Yeah. So She's um, almost there. Oh my God. Her belly button was sticking out so sharply. I was concerned. Well, cause I think it's because she's so tiny. She's very tiny. She's very, very tiny. So everything is just like, poof, yeah, she's like, like really that. compressed on her little skin there. That would young. bother me if I were pregnant. I would like have taped it down like every. I would too. I, I, yeah, yeah, I would be like, it's it just gonna, would bother me. It's going to catch on something. Yeah. Um, ugh. um, so at the store, she's like, what do you think about this backpack? And she's doing this whole thing. And then that she says, oh, it looks like a like a mom bag, but you're the grandma. Mm -hmm. And she goes, well, what if I could use it for me? Because like, I'm pregnant. And they're like, like what a way to say that. What'd you say? Yeah. She, and they go, whose is it? And she goes, she looks at her daughter and goes, bitch. Well, <laughs> it's a logical question, especially since we found out they only slept together the first night. Maybe twice One, in the first night. Yeah yeah that's what happened the all the other nights she must be a fertile myrtle i will say on that facebook group she said she has a daughter that's like in her 20s that is a lpn and studying okay. to get a master's degree i guess to be an rn okay. and that's the her pride and joy and she said and i have two seniors so i guess she went mm -hmm. two high school seniors one, one is ready early one's graduating early because they're so smart and the other one is the one that's pregnant and then, so the other two grandkids, we are assuming, belong to the daughter nurse. that's in her twenties. That's a nurse. She's been with her her been with her man for five years or something. She said. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, yeah. Okay. So, but I'm still. Do they have to all live together? But I mean, maybe they. Maybe I don't. Know. You know, I can't say shit. You know how many people live in my house. I, I know everybody. Everybody comes to Keisha's. So yes. Okay, so they laugh and they go, who's is it? And she's like, bitch. And then she's like, no, it's weird because I only had sex with him like the first night that he was out. And then her daughter goes, I know how babies are made. Okay, no, thank you. Stop, stop. I mean, you got to think she's fertile. He's yeah. been keeping it. I mean, this is the first time he's had sex in. 17 many? years. 13 years. I mean, yeah, he probably looked at her and got her pregnant uh 13 years yeah 13 years that's um, a lot of build up and so <laughs> gross and so she says they're like well what does true think she says well true doesn't know i haven't told him so outside naya goes i am surprised i am concerned and i know shantae's gonna be doing this alone i don't see any co-parenting situation happening here with this guy you know yeah yeah also keisha something i really really forgot shoot um hold on i'm pulling it up i'm pulling it up because i forgot something Super important that Matt Marr sent me regarding Naya, and it's this. Hear ye, hear ye. Wig Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Keisha presiding. All right. Wig Court is now in session. You and your wigs may now be seated. 
Okay. So Matt Mars sent me a note and goes, wait till you see Love After Lockup this week because you're going to have a wig court. And I was like, who? And then he said, it's it's Naya. It's Naya. Yeah. What Bless was happening with Naya's wig? So we understand that Oreo look was in for a while with the two. She, but colors. hers was red. She was looking like a red panda, a red raccoon. It just was bad. And then what made it worse was that it wasn't done at all. No, she they looked up in the back. Yeah. All three of them, it's like no one told them they were filming that day. No one even tried. You had the daughter with the the wig tied down in the front. Just if I'm going to be on reality TV for three seconds, mm -hmm. you know I'm coming in looking like a full drag queen. Yes, I know that. Yes. They didn't do anything but slap on wigs. And that was just a bad, that's just, it just, it was a lot. I would like to say something else while we're talking about wig court. Um, if you guys haven't gotten your eyes on chump crazy. Oh God. I told you. That's I a, you. that's a full wig court. That's a full, that's what we were talking about when I jumped apart, when I jumped because of the spider, we were talking about, yeah. we were talking about chump crazy being the whole, that whole show should be called wig court. No, this is not wit court. This is on trial. This is a whole <laughs> trial. <laughs> that because there's so many different wigs. And so I tell you wigs. what, that so woman thinks she is hot shit. Like, oh yeah, oh yeah, she does. She really, I'm fascinated by her. I am I too. Really am. Sunday She's night will be a new episode. I'm going to be on uh, Amy Archer's podcast talking about episode three. The end of episode two. When I was texting you about it, you're like, you just wait till the end of episode two, and I was like. Wow. Mm. Wow. She's something. Wow. But I like her. <laughs> She's just something. She's weird. She's just, a, she is just a full on compulsive liar. <laughs> it's yes. just <laughs> looking right at yes. a judge, just lying her ass off with a camera. Fake crew crying right and fake crying and then start talking shit. The judge is like, your mic is still on. Oh, not bad. She's not bad. something. She's something. Yeah. Uh, all right. Back to this. All right. Naya and her wig says, you know, it's not going to work out. Um, I mean, then, she's smart. Yes. She says all the right things. She just doesn't know how to pick out a wig. Well, Naya is just, she's a, she's a good friend and she's looking out for yes. her friend. Then Shantae goes, yeah, guess what else? You see this right here? And it says, you know, baby A and baby B or whatever. And she goes, it's a, uh, it's twins. It's a boy and a girl. And, um, yeah, I got to uh, call him and tell him in the next couple of days. I don't want to. I'm not you, but it's the right thing to do, but I don't want to do it. Oh, okay. um, she tells us she has four kids. She comes from a big mm -hmm. family. She's always wanted a big family. But when she found out she was pregnant with True's baby, she didn't care that she wanted more kids because she did not want to have any children with this man. And she did have an appointment to terminate the pregnancy. But then she came to realize that with or without True, she wanted this. So, well, why wasn't she on birth control? I don't know. Because I again. think you know, everything was going to be great when, when they got out because they're going to like open this restaurant together and all this stuff. Like they had all these dreams. But why would you want to get pregnant that quickly? I don't know. She's 35. Maybe she thought it wouldn't it wouldn't take right away, but she's fertile myrtle, man. Well, it took. It took. It took. Yeah. So um it doubled. It took and doubled. It took and doubled. And Naya says, mm -hmm. um, I feel like uh, she's going to take him back out of desperation. I don't want that for my best friend. I don't want that for her. Well, we know so, Shantae. Shantae says, I need to call him and tell him, but I'm scared. So she calls True as he's getting gas in a big ass infinity that I know is $80,000. They so are that not is, cheap. That they is not his are car. not cheap at all. That is not his car. And he says, yeah, he's uh, living with a roommate now because his mother kicked him out because Tisha, Tisha Shantae uh, mm -hmm. from the gym didn't like that I rejected her. So she called my mama and made up a bunch of stories about me. I, I would love to know what the stories were. I would love to know what they are. And I bet they were probably 95% true. Yep. Yeah. But that's what you get. That's what you get. Called your mama and told on you. And mama, yep. we already met mama. She's, she's like, okay. You, you, and they you, did get along already. Mm hmm. So um, Shantae says, huh, is your roommate a boy or a girl? And he goes, oh, why are you asking me that? And you the, producer, the producer says, so uh, who are you staying with? And he goes, oh, I'm staying with just this female friend. And the producer goes, are you knocking boots with your roommate? 
And he says he pleads the fifth on that. Um, he's got no money, so he's got to pay the half his rent some kind of way. And uh, his PO found out that he wasn't staying at the address he was supposed to, mm -hmm. um, which I believe is Shantae's house. It's Shantae's house, yeah. It's in a whole other town. Yeah, she, and Shantae doesn't even live in that house anymore. No, right, so. right. <laughs> Um, so he's got to go see his PO in a few days and, and see what, see what he can do to stay cool. We, we already know he's not so into like keeping up with the PO and stuff. Right. Yeah. So she says, um, so have you been working? And he goes, of course. She says, where? Mm -hmm. And he goes, why are you asking me so many questions? And she says, I'm just trying to get a life update for you. And again, right. everybody's noticing that he's always got this bandana wrapped around his hand. What does that mean? Is that a, is that a, what is it? Is it a fashion statement? What is it? I, I think he thinks he's rather fashionable. So I I would say it's a fashion statement because he really thinks he dresses well. I know he does. I know he does. Yeah. Um, and she goes, well, listen, uh, I got some big life altering news to tell you. And he goes, oh, mm -hmm. really? Life altering. OK, go ahead. And she goes, uh, true. I'm pregnant. And he goes, is this like punked? Like, what do you mean? By who? And she goes, now, come on now. <laughs> and she goes, I mean, that's a logical <laughs> question, considering they only slept together one night. And he hasn't seen her since. Um, yeah. And she goes, yep, I'm 14 weeks. Yes, obviously it's yours. And I guess what else? It's uh, twins. Man. And he says, well, that is some life altering news. Yeah. And she goes, yeah, good news or bad news. And he goes, I don't know. I'm just shocked. And why didn't you tell me before? She goes, well, right. I'm telling you because it's the right thing to do, but I'm not even sure I want you to be a part of it. Like, look how we ended. You know, you're, you're proven that you can just leave and be perfectly okay. And he goes, yeah. all right, we'll talk about it when I get down there. And she goes, no, 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 no. She goes, you're not coming up here. I was like, is it down or is it up? Neither one of them. Yeah. It's all and, um, and she goes, you're not, she goes, you're not coming up here. And uh, she goes, I feel like you broke up with me just to tear me down. I just got over the breakup. I built myself back up. I pulled myself up. I've gotten back to work and I don't want you here. And he goes, all right, I'll see you when I get there. <laughs> He's it. He's the type that will just show up. Look how he got in the car when she's like, dude, don't get in the car. Well, let me make myself right on comfortable. Yeah. He's going to take his girlfriend's car to go see her. He's the type of guy that would do that. Yeah. Uh, she says, you know, um, in the end, I don't want him around. I want better for myself and for my kids and for these. I don't want him around. So he puts his head on the car and was like, damn, damn. He's using, he's yeah. using that white bandana to wipe away his tears. <laughs> I done fucked up. Yeah. That's the look that he has on his face. Like, I really done fucked up now. Yeah. That's a lot. It's a lot. Um, yeah. Next week on Love After Lockup, Julian tells Christine that she's ungrateful. And she goes, um, I shouldn't have to be grateful to have access to my own house. <laughs> <laughs> I was just hungry. I needed to go to the fucking kitchen to get a snack or something. Uh, we were out of toilet paper and I had to go. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry that the crazy. kids saw me creep down from the attic, like the attic man. So yeah. <laughs> the attic man. Well, when we were growing up, you know, we had a thing about the attic man because we all we had an attic. Um, uh -huh. Both of my Finney and I's bedrooms were at the end of the hall, Taze is in the middle, and it and mm -hmm. it hooked up. There was a closet in both of our bedrooms that hooked up to an attic, and then that uh -huh. attic joined in the back. So we were always talking about the attic man. So if you don't think that'll scare the shit out of you when you're like ten. Okay. <laughs> like the attic man. That's uh, funny. Yeah. So um True arrives and Monet opens the door and goes, Why are you here? And shuts the door on him. He goes, Did she just close the door on me? And he thought it was funny. Yeah. Well, well, he He's basically like, is a stranger to her. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, right. <laughs> so, so it's a baby. Yeah. You get a baby, you get a baby, you get a baby. Um, it sounds like Kim and Joey have a fight about an engagement party. I couldn't quite track what was happening there, but it's like, fuck you. I'm not doing okay. an engagement party. Well, I don't want to live here whatever. Um, and then we see a lawyer type tell Letitia, somebody is trying to profit off of your hard time, which we assume has been the paralegal with his underbite. And she knows about that life because that's what she does for a living. Yeah. Allegedly. Um, now we see Hope is texting somebody and Arthur says, who are you texting? She goes, oh, uh, and he says, what else is a secret with her? She's just, she's hoish. That's how she comes off to me. Agree. Kind of hoish. Um, 
and that's fine and good if you want to be hoish, but everybody's got to be on board with the hoism. And I don't think he's on board. Yeah, with the he's not on board with it. No, mm -hmm. he wasn't the last time you were hoeing around, mm -hmm. and you know, yeah. No. Mm -hmm. So um, Zariah tells Troy with Karen standing right there, I'm not going to Buffalo. Leave me alone. Pack your shit and get the fuck out. Now, what the hell happened? What what could have happened just to get home to pack to go to Buffalo? What happened? Yeah. Because I know Karen's ass passed out once they got home. So oh, she, was, she was sleeping it, in the car. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, what what could have happened? So I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I, I can't figure it out. She did because he he's gonna see his ex so he can see his child. I don't know. Maybe. But we do see clip we had seen clips of that of him getting to see his kid, yeah. which all looked yeah. very like cute and normal. So obviously they go. Um, that's it, guys, for Love After Lockup with Keisha. You guys, if you like this podcast and you like Keisha's podcast, you what you should do in Apple, um, you could just scroll to the bottom and you could click five stars. You know? Yeah. And if you don't feel like it's five stars, just don't do anything because mm -hmm. lesser stars is well, worse. Yeah. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and sometimes and also, the reason behind them are like, hmm. Huh. Well, listen, if you don't have anything nice to say, just don't say it at don't all. Don't say nothing at all. That's, that's, that's my motto. Don't start no won't be none. If you ain't got nothing nice to say, don't say shit at all. That's it. And, yeah, and you know what else? There's lots of podcasts to listen to. Like millions of podcasts. Millions. Everybody's millions. got a podcast. Now, not everybody's got Everybody. a podcast for a long time. We not staying like power. Cliche. Not That's like right. the Lounge. Not yeah. like the Libra Lounge. So, yeah. No. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So Keisha, yes. I want you to update your pictures on the Libra Lounge, by the way, because your pictures are cute, but that's not what you look like anymore. Yeah, I was a good 300 something. That's right. Pictures. That's so funny that you said that because there's another podcast that I did and she's like, hey, I need headshots. And I'm like, Ugh. yeah, I don't have any updated headshots at all. You've got so a lot of real good pictures, but you need like some professional headshots. Professional yeah. headshots. Yeah. So next week, you know, when I ask you, can we record on Saturday instead of Sunday? Yeah. J Producer James and I are having a photo shoot. Fun. For our 10th anniversary, which was a couple of weeks ago. But, you know, we have no wedding day pictures. Yeah. Are you going to put on a wedding yeah. dress? I mean, you yeah. could. Oh, I'll see. Okay. Well, while you get those pictures made, get some of just yourself. And those will be your headshots. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're yeah. already paying the photographer. You may as well. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Might as well. Yep. Uh, everybody follow the Libra Lounge with Keisha. And I want to say that here on this podcast tomorrow is going to be before the 90 days with Kimberly. We're um, putting uh, that's going to be on the free feed before the 90 days. And I'm trying to think. So HEA is over. So we're going to do toe. 90 day toe is going to go over to. The five dollars. You guys are just if if Matt Sharp wouldn't continue to give us so many great programs, then I wouldn't have to do all this juggling. But anyway, right. tomorrow on the free feed will be the first episode of season seven of Before the Ninety Days. It's very good. There's some very whacked out people, Tiger Lily that we talked about earlier, and then there's a guy named Lauren who has like a fetish for um, transgender women, and that's disturbing. Okay. Um, yeah, that's weird, and. So far, so good. And there's another guy that's like paralyzed, possibly in some sort oh. of gang a gang hit. But he's just like, oh yeah. wow, yeah, it's they're like, mixing I, it all up. They're mixing it all up. Wow, yeah, yeah. That actually it's, sounds it's, exciting. It's really good. And then this Thursday, I will have on Jodine Weber to talk about the latest uh, true crime stories and Bravo. So that's what's going on over here, over on the Libra Lounge with Keisha. I can imagine you're still talking about J Lo and Ben or what happened this week in pop culture that you're going to have to discuss? And, well, we got to, we're about to wrap up the surreal life, you know, cause we've been following yes. wig. Uh huh. How's there. wig? Uh huh. Yeah. You know how wig is. We'd be wigging and we'd be lying. And mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. yeah, lots, lots with her and her children as well. Cause her daughter finally got charges for that yeah. whole yeah. incident. So uh -huh. yeah. and, and her children are just so dumb. Well, <laughs> We don't know about the younger ones yet. The younger ones might be okay. The ones that she raised primarily by herself are pretty dumb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amy Phillips did a really funny uh, TikTok 
and it, Andy put it on Watch What Happens. No, we didn't put that one on Watch What Happens Live. He did one with Sheena Bedora and Alexis. But Amy mm-hmm. Phillips, um, meet Amy Phillips, I believe, on Instagram. She did a very funny reel and a TikTok imitating uh, Kim Zolciak from The Surreal Life. Is funny because she's like, I, I am divorced. I'm not divorced. Who told you that? Like, no, I am divorced, bitch. This is not even a wedding ring. Oh, it's hilarious. I haven't even watched the show. And I was like, no, that shit's funny. Yeah. She talks about it so much. Someone goes, we are just so sick of her talking about her fucking divorce. That's all she talks about. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a mess. Kim. It's a mess. Yes. She's a mess. All right. Well, I will have to listen to that episode because I'm interested. Um, Everybody follow and listen to the Libra Lounge with Keisha and follow me over on Instagram at Pink Shade Pod. I am going to put up that funny reel at some point this weekend about the one that Amy and I did where I did my Angela imitation and bless my heart. I cannot I wait. Laughed at myself. I can't wait. Um, all right. That's it, Keisha. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.